Uh, the next two problems involve finding the volume of a prism, or sorry, a cone or a pyramid. So on the left hand side here, I got the prism of cylinder. That's what we've already done, right? You draw the base, you find the area of the base, you find the height, multiply. Okay? A cone or a pyramid, the difference between a cone and a pyramid, a cone, if the book describes it as a cone, is going to have circular edges. It might be a full circle, it might be a half a circle with a rectangle attached to it, whatever. But it's going to have some sort of a curved edge on it somewhere. If they call it a cone, if they call it a pyramid, it's going to have all straight edges on it. That's the only difference between a cone and a pyramid. But if you look at a cone or a pyramid, it's going to have a two-dimensional base. This has a circle. This looks like a square or maybe a rectangle for a base. But it's going to have a two-dimensional base. Draw the base. Find the area of that base using the appropriate formula necessary to find the area of the two-dimensional figure. It doesn't have to be a three-dimensional problem while you're working that area out. The 3D height is the perpendicular distance from the tip of the pyramid or cone to the center of the base. It should have a little right angle marked on it right there. So whatever that is, is the height. That's going to be on the figure. Or it might say, find the volume of the pyramid 10 feet high. So the height is 10 feet. All right, so the height comes from the three-dimensional picture or from the words. The area of the base comes from the two-dimensional picture that is the base. All right, so it says find the volume of the right rectangular pyramid. So if I'm doing this problem on my paper, here's the homework box where I would do my homework, right? Step one, draw the base. It's a rectangle. Dimensions of this rectangle are 9 inches by 7 inches. Okay. I see it's a pyramid, so my process is find the area of the base, find the height of the pyramid, and then do BH over 3. That's the formula. So, I'm going to figure out B equals. I'm looking at a rectangle. The dimensions are 9 and 7, so 9 times 7 is 63 square inches. I look for the height. It's either going to be written in the words or it's on the figure. I see the right angle. This thing goes up to the tip of the pyramid. So 8 inches is the height of this pyramid. That's 8 inches. All right. So the volume formula for a pyramid is area of base times height divided by 3. So, so 63 times 8 divided by 3 in your calculator. What I did so I could do it in my head was I noticed that this 3 cancels that 63 down to a 21. And 21 times 8 is just 8 and 16, so 168. So if you find a mental way to do it, that's fine. Keep in mind when you're doing multiplication and division within the same fraction, this times this divided by this, any factor on top, any factor on the bottom of the common factor can be reduced without affecting the other numbers. So I can reduce these without touching the 8, right? Because they're being multiplied. But again, if you get to this point here, you just want to type in 63 times 8 divided by 3 equals on a calculator. That's what would end up happening. 63 times 8 divided by 3 equals. It spits out the 168. So that works also. I would expect your paper to look about like this on one of these problems. I want to see where you drew the base. I want to see where you found the area of the base and the height. I want to see where you applied the formula and they got the answer. Uh, that's the whole process completely. Master the process, get, get, get to the point where you're really good at it. Maybe you can cut corners here and there, but right now I would say that would be where I'd expect you to be on these problems.